Hi, Teresa. Good morning, afternoon, Mike. Mike, in making sure you give Will time to, to learn and grow in the field, what's that challenge of making sure you protect him and give him that time? And can you do some of that with uh, scheme? Is it execution? Is it a combination? Well, it's things? always a combination. I mean, you can max protect and, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you're accounting for guys in a box. And, I mean, on every play, right, there's – Four down, five down. There's an ID, plus one, minus one, um, and and so in some of those protections, you know, you're building in, you know, quote unquote double teams. And if people come, uh, we talked about this the other day. That takes you out of your combinations. You have to have your eyes up and be ready to come off. You know, we're always trying to build a pocket, whether that's from behind the center, whether you move the launch spot, um, movement throws. Um, quick game, you know, empty, uh, you know, different things that we're, we've built in that we've done here in the last couple of weeks and, you know, we'll continue to do. Is the cutting, cutting the field down with the rollout not worth it oftentimes in what you might gain in, in protection of moving the pocket? Well, I think that there's always, um, yeah, you know, I don't think you want to do too much of it. I think that there's, you know, places to, you know, versus favorable looks or off coverage or you feel like you may get a natural rub. You know, I think that we've always had that in the plan. I don't think that it's something that we do a lot of, but I think that there's, you know, if you can steal a couple yards and situationally, um, you know, I think it's favorable. It does give you a little bit of relief and, you know, so I mean – how, how much or how little, I just – I don't think it's going to be a major part of what we do, but I think you have to have the ability to to, to roll out and, and, you know, get the ball out of the quarterback's hand. And, yeah, sometimes there's only two guys over there. With the way everything's happening so fast, you know, as far as the pressure getting there, like we make a lot of fuss about it maybe negatively impact, impacting levels, but is, are there positives that could be gained from that, like maybe, you know, speeding up the process for them or anything like that in this development? Well, I mean, you know, some plays have to develop, you know, so you're going to have to give time for, for some of these concepts to develop, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to do that. We'll work on that. So, um, you know, you want to move the ball down the field, you're going to, again, we have to, you know, you got to hold up as, as teams add on, as, as those second-level players add on in, into the rush. Um, you know, I think the, the less – distance that you throw it, the quicker hitting ones, um, you know, then you don't have to hold up as long, but those have, you know, again, sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not versus different coverages. So however it happens, you know, you have to play quarterback, you have to understand the, the position, you have to understand, you know, when it's there, when to step up, you know, pocket presence and, and all those things, and, you know, we'll keep doing that. You mentioned, a, I guess, a few different options at left tackle the other day. Have you... Decided on one? Uh, Dylan will probably work there today. Um, and then, you know, Jalen will to do some work there. And, you know, got, uh, you know, nine or ten healthy healthy alignment available here on the, the roster in the practice squad. So Brunskill will be back? Uh, he may be, you know, limited today, and we'll see where he is at the end of the week. <clears throat> Dylan benefit from a week maybe working there as opposed to maybe just being thrown in the middle of the game. Uh, well, I think we think practice is important. You know, so the, the more that he can he can do, um, you know, again I get the versatility, uh, but then I'm sure there's also something to, you know, being able to, you know, have some have some work there, you know, consistently and not just, you know limited snaps so you know that's where we'll be today and you know if that changes um that that could change throughout the week you know, very familiar with afc south teams with will's first time against the division opponent how much can this team's familiarity the coaching staff's familiarity with what you're going to face sunday help get will ready well I mean, there's just a lot of structure there to the defense as far as um up front you know Multiple fronts, multiple pressures. Um, 
you know, some 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 linebacker pressures, you know, the post safety, the zone, the you know, the run the corners over, and and again, every week is different. You know, we may see different looks, but this has been a defense that, you know, traditionally has kind of done what they've done. Maybe had a few wrinkles against us. See how they play us coming Sunday. You know, maybe similar to how they tried to play us last year, or you know. Again, you have to look and see what they've done the last couple weeks and, and, and think maybe that's something they'll do. We'll have to be prepared for that. Um, and we'll just have to ultimately know who, the, who we're playing against, the scheme, uh, the guys that um, you know, we certainly have to be able to take care of and, you know, in the run game and then when we want to throw it. Jackson, really similar situation last year as you guys are now at 3-6. and six. Do, do you use examples like that? Talk to the team, or maybe your past experience with teams that have had. Well, I think you that. always try to do that. I think what we're trying to focus on is improving and winning. And I think that's, you know, I think you could find a million examples of things that have happened, which again, does make sure that, you know, anything that we want to do is in front of us and that it's possible. And, you know, we know how it goes in this league. You get, get going on a roll, um, you just have to play better, longer, more consistent. Have you seen Jacksonville take the biggest jump from last year to this season? I mean, um, yeah, Joe, I don't know if that's, you know, I mean, I'm, we're just trying to get ready for them. I'm not trying to evaluate um, their success. I mean, I know, you know, ask me about the players that they have or, um, you know, skill players on offense, the impact players on defense. You know, I don't know. However, they've chosen to do that. That's what they've done. I'm I'm trying to get our guys ready for, you know, Allen and Walker and you know, all the all the skill players and Ridley and Kirk and Ingram and taking a three yard pass, turning it into 25 yards. Etienne, his skill set. You know, trying to make sure that when we rush, the quarterback doesn't run for any more than the 200 and. 23 yards scrambling that he has and take, take care of the ball and lead the league in turnovers on defense. Does that help you, Joe? I don't know. Yeah, okay. looking at Trevor Lawrence specifically, his growth, where have you seen him take several steps forward? How do you continue to put pressure on him? Well, he gets the ball out of his hand. I think he you know, knows where he wants to go, whether it's man or zone. And, um, and then if it's not there, you know, teams have either – gotten to him and affected him or he's been able to, to, to scramble and again he's he's athletic he can run um, he's big but you know they've done a good job of you know like I said the boot game and getting the ball out of his hand and using his skill set can you pressure the quarterback and hit him that leads to to turnovers they do a good job hammering the ball. You know, a couple examples of of guys that are close to going down. It, DBs are coming in there and hammering it out. So that'll be a huge focal point is our ability to to be aggressive with the football in our hand, but but not reckless and not swinging around. And then also guys getting to the football and protecting the guy with the ball and shielding guys and you know finishing on the pile if something does happen and the ball does pop out. Specifically, the red zone. Uh, offense this year has it been more missed opportunities down there the plays not being made or has it been more negative plays with penalties and sacks all the above all, all the above you know and that's not to be anything other than factual that that's you know when you have an opportunity you have to take advantage of it we know that the windows are tight um, things happen quick Mistakes lead to, you know, longer yardage situations, unforced errors, whatever it may be. So I'd say that there's a, a lot of issues. Uh, unfortunately, um, we, we need to, to correct them quickly. Does the context of the league matter to you? The red zone's been a harder place for everybody. Red zone offense is down. Red zone defense is, is doing better. Is that – a part of what's happening to you, or you could no, I mean, I think that that's that. That, it probably independent of that. I mean, it can't be, you know, I mean, we have to be better than what we are and what we've been, clearly. Um, 
But again, I think that uh, you see less pressure down there and you see, you know, more guys in coverage that are able to, you know, spread the field and, and make it difficult. Um, you know, that just I think everybody understands how critical it is um, to once you get down there that if you can force them to kick field goals, you know, that gives you a real chance uh, in the end, you know. So I think probably, you know, that's what defenses are doing. When it comes to winning on the road, how much of that is mental versus the execution that you've talked about? Well, the mental, I mean, has to be part of the execution. And you have to know your job. You have to be able to, you know, take the practices and take the walkthroughs and take the meetings. And ultimately, we have one test. We have one test on Sunday that we have to, we have to nail it. And there'll be mistakes, um, but we just can't have the the repeated, you know, critical ones. So, you know, whether you know physically or mentally, it all goes into you know, your performance. You have to have an idea of what the play is, what your job is, what your responsibility is, who you need to communicate with, what those details are, uh, and then and then physically uh, go execute. You mentioned Ridley earlier. What specifically has he added to their offense? Well, he's an excellent route runner. You know, he's an excellent route runner. Um, he's got, you know, great catch radius. You know, he's athletic. So, um Seems like that always, you know, a lot of times he's open down the field. It just is a very good route runner and, and what they're trying to do with him. What makes Josh Allen just the, the defender that he is? And obviously in a contract year, it doesn't matter if he's still going out there and doing his job game in, game out. I think this is a great – as players gotten better every year that he's been in the league, which is always impressive uh, that they continue to improve. He's got a great length. Um, Good change of direction. It's like very good instincts. He feels like when he can come under, when he needs to bend, he's got flexibility to the top of the pocket. Um, you know, and he's willing. You know, he plays hard. Got a chance of getting Sean back this week? Uh, probably be limited throughout the week, and then we'll see where he's at uh, towards the end of the week. How about Straylin or Tauzy coming along? And he's still in protocol. Again, it's either in protocol or, or not, so don't want to get too far into that. You're still in protocol and, and won't, uh, and not at the level to where he will will practice today, if that helps. You know? yeah, that's so the different some, category, yeah. They trend yep. Being able to practice. yep. So no, though he will not practice today. Um, so still in the early stages of that. Thank you. Dillard in the stage that we he will practice in protocol or anything else? Who anybody else not practicing? No, I think we're okay. I mean, SMB will probably be limited. Um, Brunny will probably be limited. Burks won't be out there. Um, Dillard won't be out there. Gentry quiet today, buddy. No, I'm finished. <laughs> well, you, you've had three starts now. Are you feeling things slowing down at all? Or uh, how's the game kind of coming to you at this point? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, it's, it all, it's all about reps. It's all about, you know, getting those game reps, especially because practice is a lot different with the quarterback position and not getting hit and feeling the pressure and knowing when to get the ball out or, or move or what have you. So it's been great. Uh, if anything, you know, just give me confidence that um, I can go out there and operate, but obviously got to do a better job. When you are out there, you are getting hit, there's sacks, pressures, et cetera. What is it about you that will allow you to continue to develop and not run into some of the issues other quarterbacks had from getting hit so much earlier? Uh, just keeping your, keeping your wits about you, you know, just stay, staying within the game plan. Uh, you know, you can't let – uh, some of those factors determine like how you're going to think about a player, your process. Uh, obviously, there's some times where there are answers that you can kind of turn to if, if there is a, a pressure, whether we're not picking it up or it's coming a little faster. So um, just keeping your wits about you and keeping keeping and instilling confidence in those in those guys up front. Because do you, do you feel some of the things that you 
you might be like Kentucky, right? You know, the, the turf toe, and the shoulder, the middle finger, all that. Do you feel that kind of prepared you for what you're going through now? Yeah, I mean, it's never going to be easy in this game. Uh, you know, it's it's a long season. No one's 100% healthy. Uh, everyone's tired. It's, uh, you know, you're going out there, going to war every Sunday and got to do it again in a week. So um, it's part of the game. I just try to focus on controlling what I can control, uh, which is what I've been doing. The game will, uh, against Tampa was probably your toughest so far. Any Anything in particular or maybe one or two things that you felt that you learned in that game that will help you moving forward? Yeah, I think just uh, – understanding the flow of the game and kind of what to expect as the game goes on, like certain situations where maybe schematically we expected them to maybe be doing a couple different things, but as we got going, we saw that it was changing and that mentality was changing. So, um, you know, we talked as a team about how we as players got to do a better job as adapting and, you know, coaches like getting on us to let us know how this flow of the game's going, what to expect in certain situations and how we can kind of just have our ears tied back for those types of things. Allen when he came back to campus maybe and, and what's it like facing a guy like like that? Yeah, he's a heck of a dude. He came and spoke to us uh, our senior year uh, at Kentucky just going through you know his his whole uh, journey how he's gotten to where he's been um, and he's a heck of a heck of a person um, and a heck of a player as well so excited to you know see him afterwards hopefully um, but we got to definitely take care of him because he, he's a dude. Players and coaches always talk about plays you'd like to have back in a typical game, when you go back and watch the film, about how many of those are there? Uh, there's always going to be some. There, I mean, whether it's you know operationally with getting either protection or mic points more cleaned up so that we can get uh, you know ourselves off to a better jump uh, with a play, or just throws that you know missed decision wise. So uh, I can't point to a specific amount, but um, try to limit those obviously, and you can kind of judge how the game went based on the number of, you know, those ones that you can kind of go back and, and tick. No, you want to go to – go ahead, Sorry, uh, Kind of an obvious question, Will, but what would a win on Sunday, first road win against a division rival that's leading your division? What would – what could a win do on Sunday to galvanize this team going forward? For sure. I mean, it's, it's a big one. We talked about – Today, it's only our second division game. So, I mean, we, we still got all these division games left. And as far as we see it, it's still wide open. We got to take it one day, one game at a time. And uh, it, it, it's a big one for sure. Um, but as long as we just focus on our keys and uh, what we can do individually to make those keys come to life, um, that's all we can really focus on, hopefully, leaving Jacksonville with the dub on Sunday. You, know, you talked about wanting to go where a guy's open and everything. But heading into a game, you have a feel for for how much you'd like to get the ball to DeAndre, how much the plan features DeAndre. You come out of a game when you aren't able to get it to him, disappointed in, in, in not being able to do so? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all about self-scout, I think, like the the ways that we have gotten him the ball or in, and how we, you know, see to get it to him in the future in different ways. So whether it's doing some of the same stuff that we've been doing to get him the ball or giving him different looks to, to get him the ball in ways that um, – you know, people might not expect. So uh, the, the coach has been done a great job scheming up some things for him, and we got to continue doing that going forward because we got we got to feed him the ball for sure. Obviously, work behind a different looking group of offensive linemen. First couple of stars, look, it's going to look different on Sunday as well. How does that impact you, or, or how can you help that group settle in? Yeah, I mean, I I got to be a leader. I got my leadership role's got to step up. I got to instill confidence in these guys and regardless of, of who it is, whatever five is up there, that they know that, you know, I got my full trust in them and that uh, they got to know that, that, or I have to know that they know that they, they know what they're doing as a unit. So we're working this week to have all those guys who could potentially be thrown in there, like just have that confidence within themselves. And I'm, I got to do a better job as a leader just to just keep bringing them along. Is your legs more something you want to start incorporating into your game? Or are you kind of satisfied with how you've been able to use your energy? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I definitely feel like I can use my legs more uh, when, it see, when it sees fit. Uh, that's part of the self scout and going back and seeing like when I could have maybe escaped or where the lanes are, and that's just a you know continuation of feeling out what's going to be best for us in the game plan and uh, what I need to do in certain situations to put the ball in play and and, and make things happen. We talked to uh, Kyle Phillips on Monday and he, he explained how sometimes he has to cut his routes short but with the routes he runs and a lot of spot throws for you. How do you guys get on the same page and have that understanding? You know when that's going to happen. I mean, that's just ball. That's just going out there and playing ball and feeling space. And, you know, we talk about having the stagnant 
you know, lines and, and numbers on a piece of paper on, on when we draw the play. But when you bring it to life, depending on all the bullets flying, like it, it could be different. And it, you, you, we can't predict exactly what the route's going to look like. And uh, as long as we have a good feel for the timing and the space of the route, uh, that's what I feel like we've done a good job of, even if it is a little shorter or deeper, um, continuing to just get guys in the right spots where we find those voids to be in the defense. Well, you you said Will in the, in the early game going deep quite a bit. Have you seen maybe defenses a little bit more prepared for, for some of your deep shots in the, in the last game or two than than maybe that first one? Yeah, I mean, we, we try not to expect or, or predict anything. You, you, you got to read it true. Um, you know, DBs, safeties, like they're, they're taught differently throughout the league and based on the different, you know, uh, route combinations that they're seeing, like when they're going to be cutting it or when they're going to be keeping high. So we got to do as good a job as we can to just have our receivers be attacking in a way that they don't know what to do. And then it's just on me to react and see when those opportunities arise, uh, when to take the deep shot when to, or when to check it down. Well, you talked about trying to be a, I've got to be a leader. Have you found leadership to be different as a rookie at this level from what it was in college or did some of those lessons carry over even, you know, if you're only a few starts in I think the, a lot of the lessons, you know, carry over, which, I mean, at, at, at the very least, if you want to be a good leader, you got to be someone who leads by example and, and, and works hard and does the right things and is able to be someone that people can come to and ask questions to. So I think that part of it, like being able to have a full grasp on the offense and really go to each position group and um, let them know that I know kind of what, what's going on, the ins and outs, like I can do a better job of that. So just as, I, as my um, just football knowledge increases and my knowledge of the offense in general, like I look forward to being more involved in that, res in that respect. Um, but other than that, um, you know, different ranges of ages, obviously, and just types of dudes. So uh, you're just feeling out for what they, who they are as people and what, what gets through to them best. Um, so that's probably the biggest difference, I'd say. I just I've always I feel like in everything that I've done I've always just wanted to be at the forefront in the driving seat because I don't know it's just I, I think I got that just innate ability to, to bring others with me and just in, and do the right thing and you know it's a it's a tough job to have but I like having the tough jobs um, so just kind of how I'm wired I guess and I got to keep finding ways to, to be a better leader. You mentioned the AFC South, um, kind of one of division games that's coming up. What have people told you about what to expect in those type of games? Or maybe what did you learn maybe in preparation for even the Colts back in uh, early this season? They're going to come at you. I mean, uh, that, that was definitely our most physical game I think we played this year. And I think it's just because, you know, there is that, um, whether it's, you know, animosity or just like competitiveness between the, the people in the division. We know how much all those games count. Obviously, every game is going to be a bloodbath, but it just seems like for those division games, like, you know, you got to step up and, and, you know, bring your best to the table or else you're going to get kicked in the mouth. So um, we expect that in, in all of our games, but especially within these divisional opponents. How much have you found things to kind of be magnified more down in the red zone in your first three starts? It just seems like that this team has had red zone problems and obviously that's you know, you got to get touchdowns down there. But, you know, with the struggles this team has had, it just seems like things have been magnified. How do you deal with that? Yeah, no, that's tough. You can't you can't expect to have a successful team if you can't go down there and score points in the red zone. So that's an, been an area of focus for us. Um, I think even on top of that, putting ourselves in positions in the red zone to be able to, you know, use the playbook in a way that's a little bit more advantageous for us. And that goes for the whole field, just with being more efficient on first and second down. Um, but, you know, we talked about it going through the film, like, it's, those are huge reps for me down there in the red zone, having to know that everything happens faster, that those windows are smaller, that the ball location is that much more important. Uh, a couple throws that I had in the, in the last game that down in the red zone that we could have changed the pace of the game. So understanding that and uh, knowing the types of balls, types of decisions that need to be made. So sort of big picture, I guess, maybe after three games, what, what sort of yourself even how you know, pros and cons? Uh, I mean, I try not to dwell too much on, I know, obviously, like my first game, we, we watched it and learned from it that day moved on. Same thing for the last two. Um, but I just got to do a better job of being clean as I can with the operation and, and getting these dudes, just getting their, their mindset on what their task needs to be done at the line of scrimmage and eliminating as much confusion as possible. I think there's been some times where just not myself or other people have just been a little unsure. So eliminating those, getting us in a spot where we can just play fast. Um, I think that's going to be a big thing for me and just can, trying to keep making good enough decisions and putting the ball in play. Coming off development, just is it statistics you're looking at? Is it feel? Just how do you gauge development? 
I think just the tape. Like you, you got to just. It doesn't matter. Like you throw, you know, a couple picks and whatever your stats are. Like you can evaluate yourself just based on what you know is expected at your position. You and your coaches really only know what the standard is and what's expected of you on that certain play. Um, so just, I guess it's not a statistical thing. It's more just a feel. When professional teams struggle, it can be difficult to maintain morale through very low lows. What does having a head coach with the temperament of Mike Vrabel do for this group? Yeah, I think he keeps us all, you know, with our heads head straight. So I mean, he's done a great job of letting us know that you know our our keys, our standards, like remain the same regardless of, of how the previous games have gone. Doesn't if we're undefeated or over, um, we're going to come in here every day, work, um, and be professionals about it. And that's what I've loved about loved about this this job and how just everyone comes in every single day, regardless of what happened that previous day, with the right mindset, just looking to get better, um, looking to prove to themselves, the coaches, the rest of the team, uh, that they can be someone that can help this team win. So it's been it's been cool to see the dudes just continue to rally forward, uh, regardless of you know how the season's gone. Coming off a game like, like the Bucks game, a series of drops, you mentioned leadership. How do you go to these guys and, and just like, What's the approach, you know, and, and letting them know I'm still going to come to you. I still have confidence. In you. How do you do that? I mean, it's through that. It's through how you speak to them and, and instilling confidence, and then it's through your actions, which is continuing to go to them, and, and that's how they're going to build their confidence back up. If, uh, if someone's, you know, had a couple drops, the only way that they're going to get away from that is if they catch a couple balls. So it's not, it's not a good thing to just, you know, see a drop and just get off a guy just because of that. You got to have confidence. Like I got to have confidence in everybody up front and everybody else in the huddle there. Um, so it's continuing to feed them, continuing to get reps with them in practice, um, and, uh, and just keeping still in confidence in them. What, 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 are, they say, what are they yeah. saying to you? Sorry? What are they saying to you maybe after some of the drops? Yeah, I mean, when, when a seer drops a ball, it's, com it's common for them to – Come to you and be like, hey, like my bad, whatever. But it, you got to move on from that. You got to tell them, hey, it's you know, we're, we're all good. We're we're gonna get it next time, and uh, just let them know not to dwell on it because you know when when you have one and you think about it, it turns into two and more. So getting them in the right headspace to just keep plugging forward. And on the flip side of that, uh, if you make a mistake, what what guy, what are guys saying to you to pick you up? Same same thing there. I mean, just just keep pushing the ball down the field. You know, if I make a decision here. Uh, that you know I shouldn't have made. Uh, it doesn't mean that I, I need to dial it back and be more conservative. Got to be as, as confident with my throws and my decisions, regardless of how the previous ones worked out. Thanks, guys.